Uh, the reason I'm here today is Jeff got his doctorate yesterday, so Tony is preaching for Jeff out there in Winterfield. So I got to asked to teach today. I kept the format the same, so if you looked at the paper, you've already seen that, but I can't do that little paper like he does, <laughs> the, the, the two sides. So we're on one page. And I teach different than Tony. He's a monologue teacher. I'm an interactive teacher. So in my mind, I don't have enough for me to say to fill our time, which means you get to, and I need you to contribute. And this is a good one today where we everybody's lived all this stuff, so we'll be able to contribute. So where the question we have today is, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? No. No. <laughs> okay, well, let's figure that out. Okay. Matthew 6, 25-34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, and thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So. Do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, in this verse 34, I actually many years ago highlighted it in my Bible. There's a goal for me to try to live by. I haven't got there yet, obviously. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So, why do you worry? And why do you worry about the closed verse 28? So let's talk, give me some reasons, why do we worry? Fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown. How often does that worry of the unknown come to pass as you worry? Most of the time, not. Most of the time, not. It seems like as I live through life, the more I learn about life and possibilities, the worry gets more in-depth. But it really isn't that way. I have more possibilities stuff could go wrong. But if you give it to God, it just doesn't happen like that. Anxiety weighs on us. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. Proverbs 12, 25. Good word makes it glad. So what about anxiety? We carry anxiety with us, don't we, as we go through life. What do you guys think about, is anxiety different than worry? Or is it It's two sides of the same coin? Or What do you think about that? Anxiety. No, they're both different. They're different, yes. Right. What happens when you get it, and I can't get the word I'm anxiety. But anyway, excuse me. But anyways, what happens to you is that you build up on it daily, and you maintain it, and you you're always got it there, and you got trying to change everything. Worrying is a little bit different because you can get over it, but this the, this can cause you physically sick. And it just wear it because I've I've noticed that, including myself, has gone through it. You can worry enough. That you can get yourself into this, and you don't know where tomorrow's coming, then you remember where yourself sick. And mm -hmm. God said, "Don't worry about it." Mm -hmm. And and we get ourselves all worked up mm -hmm. on it. And every one of us in here, we've had legitimate anxiety, right? Meaning that it came to pass. Yep. We go ahead. Anxiety too. You can medicate. Yes. You yes. can't medicate worry. And I didn't know whether I wanted to bring that up or not. Yes. Yep. Yeah. There was a situation at work two years ago. There was six people. Very bad situation. They couldn't get out of it. The bosses and everything was pushing down on them. Four of the people took medication. Mm -hmm. 
and it was just the anxiety of every day. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and when that situation got fixed, they all got off. I think it was within six weeks. They, it was real quick. They just, yeah, and it's and it was the and every one of them said the same thing. It was this anxiety of mm -hmm. yep. they pull in the parking lot and get all tenants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so now number three, I want to use the word Tony used. We're going to park here on three. I got some extra stuff. We're going to spend a little time on this since we have established worry and anxiety. I wanted to put this third. Create your godly peace by giving stress away. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 7. How many agree with that, what 1 Peter 5, 7 says? Just without thinking very deep into it, cast all your anxiety on Him. Is that easy enough said? Said. Said. Right. Next question is, and I wrote this down here, but, here's the, the big but. you got to actually do it. You've got to actually release it. Let's talk about that. Every one of us have been told, and we have told people, give it to God. Pray about it, give it to God. But how do you let that, let me, give me some experiences you've had. How do you let it go? To say that I really, because you didn't, did you give it to him because you prayed about it? No. You give it to him when it's gone, when you're not worrying about it, when you're not anxious about it. So how do you how do you let it go? I'll give you an example. Years ago, Rhonda was little, she got in trouble. Brought her in, sat her down, she's all you know, scared dad's gonna do all this. And I said, You're forgiven, you made a mistake, don't worry about it. And then I seen her, you know how the kids kind of try to avoid you with their eyes and all. I said, Hey, I said, you understand. I said, and I got I said, Jesus gives, forgives me when I sin. I just forgive you. That means it's done. If he forgives me, I have to forgive you. Let it go. She came back later, and you know, the kid just come randomly up and give you a hug. And she thanked me for explaining that to her. She says, you're really not mad at me. I said, no. So, that, as a little child, she was able to let that anxiety go. Because dad took it, forgave her, it was okay. That doesn't, I know that, I did it, but that didn't help me in my own internally giving out to God. I pray about it, but I don't let it go. And what does he ask, what does he ask when he says, give it to him? What, what does that mean to you? God asks you to give him your problem. Stop worrying about it. Barb says, stop worrying about it. My question, I would answer the question with a question. Is it a one-time deal, or is it something that you do continually? And what would the answer to that be? Not to throw it back at you, yeah, that's but a great question. Yeah, I want to hear question. what anyone says. I mean, do you have to keep doing it? I would say some things. Some things. Yeah. yeah. So if the processor, if the item's still on the plate, you may have to do it the next day again. Yeah. And the next day. So yeah, you mean it keeps reoccurring? Well, even if you're not through the trial or the whatever. Yes. yes. And that's the thing for me, I would say, you know, when you're when you find yourself in your situation, that's where fasting comes in. You gotta take yourself to the next step that God gives you. Mm -hmm. You guys hear that over here? Do you fast from food or what do you yeah. or from something else? Depends. Okay. Depends on the situation. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is like me. If I get in a situation, I turn it over to God, then I want God to work fast. Do it now. <laughs> yes, do it now. Is that what you mean? And then, then I'll yeah, say why. And then he tells me, he says, be patient. And that guy ain't got the patience. I want to change now. Yes. And that's when we get ourselves into trouble. I keeps repeating. Whenever we're supposed to turn it over to God, we're just supposed to hand it to him. And even though it's still in our minds, we're supposed to just let it go. But we can't do it. And I'm going to take something Joe Simple's mowing the yard. Uh -huh. I got a problem. My, my grass is high. That's a problem. Right. I go mow the grass. It's over. Done. I, that's, that thought is away. We, and things in our life, that's what we do. Is we fix our irritations. Mm -hmm. Whatever word you want to use. And now what, like Joe's talking about, now we're getting into something that's deeper. We give it to God. We didn't do anything 
actually do anything uh -huh. except mentally give it to him. And now we're starting with why can't we give it? We're, you, we're I think we're accustomed to actually accomplishing to fix the problem. Right. Someone's upset with you, you go talk to them. We always can hear we can do and make it better. What God's asking us to do is to, in faith, release it. Release it. Which is a whole other level of the letting it go side. But one thing I did here, uh, Tony mentioned this a couple weeks ago about parallel scripture. Yeah. If you go to Luke 12, 22, it starts at 22. It's the same thing I just read to you. And I compared sentence for sentence. There's a little bit of difference in the wording, but the thoughts are lined up right down the line until we get down to verse 30. And God inserted something extra which applies right here. So I'm going to read the extra part. That, For the pagan world runs after such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. The first part, is everybody okay with that first part? The pagan world runs after such things, and your father knows. That's the difference between us as Christians in our lives and non-Christians. See how he made the separation? They, they look after things this way, go after things this way, we go another direction in wanting stuff. See, see after the common one it says, and your father knows that you need them. So God knows what we need. So then he says, but seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. So let me ask you, if God says he's going to give you what you need, can I go back up to that first number one, why do you worry? <coughs> if you have the faith and he is giving you he said that see but you gotta do you gotta do one thing and are we all not doing that thing are we not seeking him is everybody in here that's been doing for many years right decades and these things will be given to you as well so can anybody tell me a situation where God didn't give you what you needed I can't. Then you didn't, you didn't need it. Hmm? Then you didn't need it. Betty says, and you didn't need it. <laughs> you didn't need it. Back to what Joe's talking about. You don't know when. Right. So, so we get what we need when we ask. When we ask. If we're seeking him, and, and what I'm trying to say, we've established the lifestyle, hopefully, that we are where we need to be for this worry and anxiety to be given away to him, and he takes it. But we don't always get what we ask, going back to what Betty Correct. said. Correct. Half the time, or whatever, percentage, it isn't something you really need. One of the big things in my life that I compare everything to is the story of Corey Ten Boom, I bring it up all the time with Darren. I mean, they, I don't know if you're familiar with it, she was the um, Holland, and when the Germans came in, she went to prison because she and her father, her father and her sister were housing Jews. Yes. I mean, she ended up in Ravensbrück, and she didn't get anything she asked for. At that time. Materially. Yes. But she had a relationship with the Lord. So I guess, you know, sometimes in my carnal mind, I just keep thinking, ask and you'll be given, and that's talking about, you know, physical things. Well, but it doesn't always mean physical things, evidently. I mean... The, well, to back up what you're saying, look where it says, Father knows what you need, okay. not want. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what Betty said. It, it's, yeah. our, our needs and wants are, don't line up. Right. It's not, they do at the point, but not, not completely. It's not 100% one to one. And so then you've got to ask yourself, what, what well, is... Your need and your want probably changes as you grow. Right. You're not, I don't want stuff. I don't want... Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want those things. Your want or change. Yeah. And, you know, as we go through this, I think it's beautiful that as we look around the room... All of us are probably at a very different place than the people that are outside those doors. And so for myself, like I'm praying and thinking about 
you know, how can I take this? And yes, there's times I worry, and yes, I have anxiety at times, and I have to um, try to let those things go. But then, more importantly, is who am I going to interact with that really has these underlying things? And how can I help them? How can I see them? Because mm -hmm. if you're not seeing this in other people, that's what we're here for. We're here to help this the next person get this stuff. Because I hope most of us are there. You know, Jody, you were really close. You were right. talking, I read it. Yeah. And what, what these two verses I'm using just describe what she said. Seek his kingdom, is what she's talking about, which means our needs change. Right. Because our perspective changes. And then these things will be given to you. So God's going to give, as, as we change, God's going to give us what we need. And what are we here for? To do his will which I'm going to get in depth here in a couple minutes. So this all doesn't tie on it. It ties in what we're talking about here. And if you're focused, how, how can you have worry and anxiety? I tell myself this all the time. This is a soapbox moment. How can I have all this worry and anxiety if I'm focusing on God? I can't. So when I'm over here, I don't even have to think, guess what, Bill? You're not over here. It did. It, I, I can't do both. So when, the more time I spend over here, I just I need to go back to here. And it's just that simple for me <laughs> to think about, not do it. <laughs> just think about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I got a check, a built-in check for myself. Now, number four. I love this. This might be my favorite one of these seven. What don't you ask God about? Matthew 6, 8 says, For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and him who knocks, the door will be open. Every Christian I've talked to always, always has some version of why well, I, I didn't pray about that. Because. And then they can, I'm not worthy, they want to bother God, that kind of stuff. So, so does, what, is there things you don't ask God about? Did, uh, upon reflection, you probably should. Would we all nod yes to that? Remember, this is an interactive class, so you've you got to throw some back. <laughs> what do you think, Lisa? I'll call on you. Is there things you don't ask God about? Probably not. Yeah. Probably, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Do you have a why? That's my question. Why don't you? The reason. It's. Well, most times I don't ask because I think I got this. Yeah. There's a good, yeah, there's a great one. Yeah. Don't. That's mine. Jeanette, that, that would be my number one reason. I just make it happen. I'll, I'll figure it out. So. I always wait for the big things. I can handle the little things. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. It's, and Jody, and then we all have. Jody says her level of big things starts here. So anything below that line, don't give, don't bother God with it. I got it. I'm here. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for me, if I'm my line, if I'm below it, I try and I, I, I fall short. I just I know where I failed. I messed up. So I can rationalize it myself. I still didn't need to bother God because if I'd have done it right, I'd have taken care of it. God's, I think God's just sitting there going, if you just ask me, I'd have taken care of it. Better than you figured it out anyway. So I'll tell this story real quick. So yeah. there was, it's, it's short. So I used to work in a jewelry store many years ago. And I'll never forget this person came in. And I knew this person. And they were going to buy a piece of jewelry for Valentine's Day. Like how simple is that? Y'all men have to do it. And so you just come in, you grab something quick, and you go about your business. And the person said to me, because he really liked this piece, and he was like, i got to go pray about it. And I thought, oh, my heavens, like, really? And, and I still think of that because there will be times that I'm just working on something that's simple so I can do it. And I will always remember this guy needing to pray about a piece of jewelry. Did you get it? <laughs> I think you had a sure worse meeting. How long did it take him to come? To the, was he back like the next day? Or the he never came back. Never came back. But that was the interesting. Reason. I wonder if you had a once in each balance. Thing. Yeah, one. <laughs> you know. so. Well, there was a woman here, a young woman, said to me when we first came to church here after the crossroads took over about praying. And we usually get into things, you know, and we find ourselves in hard times, and then we pray about it, you know, we get ourselves in a fix. And she said to me, she said, Joe was standing out in the parking lot. She said, have you ever thought of praying before you started a job? 
I looked at her kind of funny. A couple weeks later, we had a, a major job in here to do. Mm -hmm. I prayed about it before we start. That job went easy. Went easy. And then I found out that when you start praying before you work, it's the same thing when I come down here to work in the church. I pray. Help me through what you want me to do. This is a bit small prayer. Mm -hmm. But what I have found out from, from that young lady telling me that is if I pray before I do the job, not after I get in the fix, but when I before I start that job, it makes it easier. It makes it easier. And I can and we had uh, me and Ed ran into a problem here. And Ed was getting disgusted. And I finally said to Ed, I said, I think we should pray about this. We prayed like that. Things just fell right in place. But, and you, but it's hard to be mad after you pray, too. Yes, <laughs> it is. It's, I mean, that fixes yes. that part of it, too. Yeah. Yes. But you got established that. You know, it's something that we have to establish in our yeah. life. Myself, years ago, I don't even, you guys remember, I became an elder, and then I had to do the communion meditation. So I would write out the entire three to four minute talk. I got every word on a piece of paper. Well, let's, I'm looking back. Just imagine this. I can talk, I'm sitting in my seat, and i got to walk down there, you know, whatever, 15, 20 steps, and go up there, say a prayer, and read this. I would be so nervous, so nervous. And I got tired of that after multiple, i go up there, my voice would be real high, and so nervous. My... And so one time, I was really bad, and I just got up out of my seat, and in those few steps, I said, God, just call me down. I, and next, I'm up there, and it went better, like Joe's saying. So... I mean, I'm talking, you did that every four to five weeks, and it was 15 or 20 times in, many times of this. All at once it dawned on me, maybe God's answered my prayer that fast. See, it sounds silly, but I just didn't think that God answered prayers right now. I had never experienced it. Don't the, limit God. The, yes. yeah, you're right. I had him right. in a box. She's right. I had him in this box. And so then I realized, all I got to do is just say that prayer. And, he, and I... Now, I told this one time, somebody said, yeah, you were calming yourself down. You taught yourself. Well, maybe I went through a bunch and I, did, I wasn't nervous, so then I, that wasn't an issue anymore. But the point was, I just prayed. I needed it. I needed it now or forget it, because I'm talking in a couple minutes, seconds. And it worked. And that, that was something, for, a real eye-opener to me. And, and I think all the times that I struggled through that, and all I had to do was just say, God, just help me. Didn't have time for nothing else. See, I told Ed, Ed, when Ed did his first meditation, I told Ed, I said, Ed, count on God when you go up there. And he said, I told him, I said, don't ever be surprised when you go up there to do a meditation that God doesn't change your words. Oh, it all happens all the time. <laughs> no, yes, it does. It's what God wants you, to, the people, to hear at that time. People don't understand that, but that is. Yeah. So you gone. know, all those years we were traveling with kids from Bible Bowl and all that. If it hadn't been for prayer before we left, mm -hmm. who knows what would have happened. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 I was just thinking that. I think that I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the prayers of the saints from where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And for the people who were on their knees. Um, when, when I got saved and I called the lady who was my Sunday school teacher when I was a child, um, I remember her saying, I can now scratch you up. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. it, and I know what she meant by it, but I also was like, please don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not done yet. So I, I think so, yeah. you know, there's so many prayers that you don't even realize. Right. And going back to what you said, Joe, what I keep thinking about is sometimes um, having it answered quickly, like what Bill said or what you said, yeah. or, or the now, I think that's God reminding us, teaching us, showing us. Yep. You need me for all of these little things, too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Number five. I want to read Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything. No, uh-oh. <laughs> that, that goes back to the beginning, doesn't it? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. I want to move on because we didn't we just cover that one? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. Okay. Matthew 6:33. Much is promised. More than we realize. 
Seek first his kingdom and righteousness, and all these things will be given you as well. Honestly, folks, we'll, we'll never know. I, I come to the realization a while back that I guess I'm never going to know how God could have blessed me. Because I've never asked. I've never had the, the level of faith and commitment. It all, I, all, I know I could have done more and lived more. And if he says, he, if you ask, he'll give it to you, then I realize I've never asked. So, and those seasons of my life have passed, I'll never know. Which kind of bums you out when you think about it. But then you have to tell yourself, I'm doing the best I can. But what do you guys think? Do you think you have your mind around how much God can bless us? If I, You hear stories about one person who committed all in and what happened to him. What, what God accomplished through that. You go, wow. And... Let's see, 38. I think we got to quit about 10 till, right? Isn't that about when we quit? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Philippians 4 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. Spend some time here. If you ask, help is everywhere. What do I mean by that? God's hands and feet, how He gets His work done here on earth, is through us. He also does it in this, on the spiritual side, but I'm talking now in the physical side. That's us. What does that entail? Uh, let's talk about crossroads and the building thing they do in the spring. You know, the ramps and the, the houses and all the stuff that they fix and all that. That is 100% a God-led thing, but it's also about Saturday morning with your DeWalt drill working. Those are fun days, but it's a work day, a little work. There's that kind of stuff that we do. That, that's God's outreach. That's, we are helping Him increase His footprint in this area. Uh, last week, about a week and a half ago, Jody and I found out someone had lost a friend of theirs. And I've heard stories about this, and I, but this to me is kind of a, a chuckle on myself. So we dropped a friend of ours, so we dropped everything and we went to her house. This, was that Saturday? Friday? I forget. What day we, so we just went down just to spend time with her. She's sitting on the porch and there's someone else there. And I was just, late. we'd been here about 45 minutes or so, and I was just absolutely, pull, she had weeds all around her front porch. You know how they you know, put the stone out, the weeds are all. I was just pulling a couple weeds up, absentmindedly, and she said, oh, Bill, and she said, yeah, I need to pull these weeds. Will you help me? So Jody was talking, like what you would think, you know, helping her. And me and her pulled weeds, a whole big trice bag full of weeds. You wouldn't think that's what you would be doing to, to, to spend time with someone in that situation. It just, that's just what happened. That was a God-led thing. I was, in my mind, I was thinking, I didn't really want to pull weeds right now. But I came down here to spend time with her, and that's where we're at, so that's what we're doing. That's what she needed. That's what she needed. And then she got to talk, and we, when we started pulling, it was funny, when she started pulling weeds, just some thoughts started coming out. And, and she was sharing with us. Those are the kind of things that you just do. We all we all done them. Uh, a couple things in my past. Years ago, out of Crossroads, there was a men's seminar thing. Jeff and I worked with it. We had, we ended up with a uh, Saturday two session. There's a hundred some guys there, and Jeff had me speaking. I'd speak and Jeff speak. Well, I'm already blown away because now I'm speaking with Jeff, and that's not going to work. <laughs> and, uh, and he's telling me, oh, you need to be more dynamic. Make sure you're dynamic when you're talking." I didn't know what dynamic meant. And I had to go first, which I thought if Jeff would have went first, I could have kind of focused on that dynamic thing. So right before I spoke, I got a phone call. Somebody called me and said, listen, I got a team. There's a group of us praying for you. I think we're she was group. So just go do your thing. Just wanted to let you know. Do you realize what that did to me? Because if they're praying, which I wasn't, I should have been, then God's going to help me. 
that's here, God taking care of us through someone else. Probably the worst moment of my life, I needed to pray, and I couldn't. So, I actually called the same person that had called me before I spoke. Why not? You know he's good. <laughs> I knew. I said, this is what's happening. I need prayer. My moment of despair didn't lessen one bit what I was dealing with. They said, okay. I, I don't remember the conversation. They said, okay. I hung up. But there was a part of the burden was lifted because I knew I needed prayer to be happening, but I couldn't do it. But I called someone and they did it. That's what we're all here for. The point of the story is, if they hadn't reached out to me the first time, I might not have called the second time. Does that make sense? Jeanette, thank you. It was her. <laughs> and that's what we're here to do. You, the, the worry, the anxiety, we can take it away by letting God use us. The peace that we have, and ask Jody what my whole thing was when, years ago. I was all about peace, wasn't I? Signs on how peace here. She had, she bought. I, I just wanted peace in my life, and it, I was. It took years to get myself to where I wanted to be peaceful. Because I can't be what God wants me to be until I, I was at a certain level of peace. I needed to give the stress away. When I finally gave it to God, it went away. So that's the point of. If you go back up, it says, "Can any of you worrying at a single hour to our life?" What's our answer? No. But what we can do is give our burdens to God, which frees us up to impact other people. And that's, like Jody was talking about, the people outside of here, that's huge. That's a soul. You can move heaven just by letting God use you. One person at a time. And all we do is make ourselves at the level that God, we can hear God speak to us. How, how do we hear God speak when we're upset? We don't, right? So, so that's what takeaway. I want you to take away today is let yourself be in a place by giving what you need to give to God that you can impact others.